Welcome to our 2023 studio setup tour. Today we're going to walk you through our new space, show you step by step how we built it, how we use it day to day. As always, if you want to check anything out, it'll all be linked down below in the description. Let's get into it right after this quick word from today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by BOBKeys.com. You guys know the drill. You've just finished building your brand new PC. You boot it up and bam, that hideous activate Windows watermark appears. And the worst part is you forgot to budget $200 for an activation key from Microsoft because you spent it all on RGB. But that's okay because you don't need to spend $200, you can pick one up from today's video sponsor, BOBKeys.com, for a tenth of the price. The best part is you can use my code TT25 for 25% off, which takes this already cheap Windows 10 Pro key from around $22 to $16. If you're in the UK, that's £13. You place your order, your activation code gets added to your orders page, you whack it into the Windows activation screen, and boom, you're fully activated, no more watermarks being burned into your retinas. TT25 for 25% off, link in description. Okay, so this right here is the main backdrop slash filming area of the studio and we've learned a lot since our previous place in terms of what works and what doesn't when it comes to improving our workflow and we do this full time so it's super important that everything is just ready to go when we need it. I'll run you through how we built this area first. So Nene and I sat down and talked about color schemes and how we wanted everything to look. For those of you that didn't see part one of us building the studio, we'd initially planned to have a tall workbench in the middle here but after four failed delivery attempts we abandoned that idea and went with this design instead and honestly I'm glad we did because it turned out awesome. So everything you see here is from Ikea and these two big cabinets on the side are from Ikea's PAX wardrobe range. They're super tall, have got lots of storage and one of the things we love about Ikea is the customization. So we went with these nice frosted glass doors. The idea was to light these from the inside with some RGB to give this subtle glow. We actually found a kit on Amazon that was perfect for this. I'll link it in the description. It's basically just six pre-made light bars with mountain hardware included, plug and play. We did have to do a little bit of cable management to get everything looking nice and clean, but overall the effect is exactly what we were looking for. And they also don't flicker on camera as well. That was super important. These middle cabinets are actually part of Ikea's kitchen range. We've got three of them. Them. And one thing I'll say is that they're a lot better built than Ikea's bedroom range. We've used Besta cabinets in the past, and I guess because these are kitchen cabinets, they're designed to take a lot more abuse. We also stuck with the theme and went for a kitchen countertop. Now, the cabinets came in at 72 inches in length. Meanwhile, the countertop was 74. So I did have to whip out the circular saw and take a couple inches off it, after which it slotted in perfectly between the two cabinets. Now, Nene did actually end up vinyl wrapping this in a slightly darker concrete. In hindsight, we probably should have just gone with this color to begin with, but the result was the same. We also drilled some holes in the top and added some grommets to allow for cable management since we planned on having a PC and monitor on here. And we installed this outlet as well because we tend to test PCs on the workbench and it's just nice having somewhere convenient to plug into. There are also holes down beneath the cabinets as well so that we could route all of our cables to keep everything up top looking nice and clean. And while I'm down here, we also picked up this ergo mat. So when we're working on PCs and stuff, it's just a lot more comfortable when we're doing stuff for long periods of time. Now, one thing that was really important to us was storage. We have a lot of PC parts that we need easy access to while we're building PCs, as well as things like tools. We do plan on getting a 3D printer soon, so we'll probably end up designing our own custom inserts for these drawers, but so far, it's looking pretty good. As you can see, we decided on a black and white color scheme, so we went with these black handles just to add some contrast, which I think turned out really nice. Now, moving on to the shelving. This is a really cool hack that Nene invented a couple of years back. It basically consists of IKEA lac shelves, with Ikea Moss Lander shells flipped upside down and placed on the front, which all comes together to create this really clean, custom looking shelving. Now again, the space between the two packs cabinets was 72 inches, so we did have to do some cutting here. The lac shelves needed a couple inches shaving off, and we had to measure for the Moss Lander shelves and cut the second one, because they're not quite as long. One thing I'm starting to learn is that there's a right tool for every job. You saw earlier I was using a circular saw to cut the tabletop, but for this kind of thing, a mitre saw is much more appropriate. Now one thing to bear in mind is that lac shelves aren't the sturdiest of shelving. So to solve this, we bolted them in from the side of these cabinets, which seem to work really well. They're not sagging downwards anymore. Once the shelving was installed, we could move on to the backdrop panels. Now, these are from the Wood Veneer Hub. Honestly, they're kind of expensive for what they are. It's one of those things that you could probably make yourself, but the convenience of having them pre-made is just nice. Anyways, we measured the gaps between each of the shelves. Once again, did some cutting with the circular saw to get everything to fit. And it really transforms a room and adds a premium feel to the space. We also felt like in our last studio, we had too much white. So the black helps to add some much needed contrast. 
They do also come with the added bonus of offering a slight acoustic advantage as well, which is why we've got them in some other places of the room. And in fact, I think the audio in this room is the best we've ever had in a studio. We've got thick carpets on the floor, we've got lots of panels on the wall. There's still a few tweaks to be made here and there, but overall it sounds really good. Onto lighting, now again we learnt a thing or two here from our previous studios. The first is it's sometimes nice to have some daylight. The studio feels so much airier and nicer to be in. We do need to pick up some blackout blinds so we can control the light when we need to, but it's just such a feel good space in the daytime. The second is don't have too much RGB. This time we're using pure white 6000 Kelvin LED strips on all of the shelves, and these are some of the densest, brightest strips you can find. They're 238 LEDs per meter, and they just give off this gorgeous, clean white light. One thing about RGB LED strips is that even though they say they can do white, it's really never a pure white. It tends to have a much more blue hue, and that's never good for cameras when you're trying to get the right white balance and skin tones. Now, one thing to bear in mind about these strips is that they're not just plug and play. They come on their own on this big roll. You have to buy the correct power supply separately. And if you wanted to do custom lengths like we have on these shelves, you'll need to do some soldering. I know this can seem quite daunting to some people, but it's totally worth it. If you're looking for some help on how to do this, definitely check out my mate Chris's channel. He has some fantastic tutorials and ideas for inspiration. I'll link it down below in the description. Now, I know some of you are probably desperate to know how we did the neon part of the panels. This was actually Nene's idea. We were sat down trying to think of a way we could add neon between the slats, and she said, what if we use Govee's neon death strips? As it so happens, they fit between the panels absolutely perfectly, and it's such a well-diffused light with this multi-layered silicon that it just made total sense, super easy to do, and I mean, the overall result turned out freaking awesome. Okay, so since this is primarily our studio, its main purpose is to enable us to make content quickly and efficiently, and to do that, we have three Panasonic S5s. We like to use the same three cameras, that way when we're switching between different different angles, everything looks identical. You see here we have a table in the center of the room, it is height adjustable. This is where we film videos at, so the A cam is positioned just opposite, there's a B cam off to one side in the corner. And this is also where we film unboxings, so we have a top down cam as well. A few of you are asking about how we rigged this up, it's basically a multi-purpose extendable ceiling mount photography arm, we've got the top down cam attached to that. Then we also have a couple of super clamps on there which each have their own arms, so there's a light bar on one of them just to fill in some shadows on the table. Table. And finally, a mic. This is the Octava MK012. And again, this arm is adjustable, so we can drop it down when we're using it and put it back up when we're not. Also mounted to the ceiling is this paper backdrop system. So when we need to just get like a clean shot with a simple background, we can roll this paper all the way down just in front of the workbench. And then we can move the table a little bit closer as well just to give us some more space over there. And yet, yeah, super handy to have. For our main lighting, we're using a couple of these Godox SL150s with these round soft boxes attached to them. We've also got honeycomb grids on there as well just to control some of that light spill. We haven't really had a chance to film in here much yet, so we'll probably be doing some tweaking, but so far, looks pretty good. Now, I've actually got all three cameras going into USB capture cards attached to that green PC over there on the workbench. And that PC is running not only the monitor on the desk, the racing sim, a VR headset, but also this 55 inch TV. Heat was another thing we wanted to reduce in the studio because in the last place we had two PCs running, a laptop, and that in addition to all of the filming lights meant it got really hot really fast. This time we just have one PC to run everything and this is a super cool build that me and Nene put together. She helped me do the custom water cooling on it and the fact that it's custom water cooled as well means that we can run all of the fans super quiet so it's great for audio too. By the way, if you're wondering how we ran all of the camera cables, they're all up in these cable raceways so they come across the ceiling and then they go down and then they come across the wall here and go over to the PC on the desk. And by the way, pro tip, if you're going to pick up cable raceways, don't get them from a hardware store like Lowe's. We learned that the hard way. They are like 10 times cheaper on Amazon. But anyway, what this means is, is that we can open up a program like OBS, pull up all three cameras and have a giant live preview of whatever it is that we're filming on the TV. We can full screen specific cameras or view them all at once to check things like angles and focus. We we also have wireless receivers attached to each camera along with a shutter remote so when we're filming multi-angle stuff we can hit this one button it'll pull focus and all cameras will start recording at the same time.
same time. We even have each camera hooked up to dummy batteries connected to the mains, so we never have to worry about them running out. Now you probably notice we've got everything mounted on these poles. These are called auto poles and they save a ton of floor space. Ordinarily, we'd probably have needed like four tripods to rig all of this stuff up and we'd have had no space to walk around the table. But yeah, how they work is pretty simple. It's basically just an extendable pole with a handle. You can extend it to whatever length you need and then you just crank this handle to lock it. In terms of mounting stuff to it, you see here we've got this clamp. You can basically just put the clamp wherever you want. It's like Lego, so if you can imagine it, you can probably build it. In fact, we even figured out a way to mount the TV to one of these poles. So we've got the camera and the TV all on one pole with the cables running down it. And it's also much closer to the wall than you could get with, say, for example, a tripod. If you do any kind of filmmaking, you need to pick some of these up. The only other things on this side of the room are this little bookcase. So on here, we just keep some of our filming essentials like lights, we've got mounting plates. Nene also mounted some of our tube lights on the wall as well, so they're just easy to grab when we need them. And we also have this cool little stack pack system. So this is great for organizing smaller camera accessories. You can pop each piece off. And it also has wheels as well. So when we need to take it with us, we can do. Moving on to the racing sim corner. Now, when we were designing the office, we were left with this little bit of extra space between the cabinets and the wall. And we thought, what better way to fill it than with my racing sim? Now, I mainly race for fun at the moment, although I do plan on using this to make some content for you guys in the very near future. So let me know if you'd be interested in that. Now, it all started with continuing the same shelving as we have across the main backdrop, followed by adding these 3D wall panels. They have this cool industrial looking design design. Again, to get everything to fit nicely, we did have to cut these. If you're looking to do the same, by the way, the best method I've found is to use a circular saw with a fine tooth blade. That way it's less likely to chip when you're cutting it. But yeah, 3D panels really help to transform a space. There's lots of designs to choose from. They're easy to install and I think they look great. Now the cockpit chassis is the Prime from GT Omega and this is an extruded aluminum frame. So not only is it super solid, it's also great for modifying. Like you can literally bolt whatever you want to this and make it fit your needs. It's a great base to start with. If you want to pick this up, by the way, I have 5% discount links down below in the description. The wheels, pedals, handbrake, and shifter are all from Moza Racing. Moza have been absolutely crushing it recently. I've got the R5 bundle on here. And previously, I'd only ever used the Logitech G920, which is, of course, a gear-driven wheel. So the switch from that to a direct drive was just like night and day. I absolutely love it. And there's so many accessories as well. In fact, I've got some upgrade videos coming for you guys soon. You might be wondering about this behemoth of a monitor. This is LG's 45-inch curved OLED ultra-wide, and honestly, it's a weird monitor because I don't think it's really usable as an everyday monitor. It's way too big for the 2K resolution when it comes to doing emails and spreadsheets, but for a racing sim, it's absolutely perfect. I have raced on triples before, and while not quite the same, it does still give that sense of immersion with the dramatic curve. Not to mention, it takes up much less space, is less of a headache to set up, and I mean, with it being an OLED, the visual quality is just insane. I've also got a Govi M1 strip on the back of this monitor. If you're looking for the best RGB LED strip, this is it. It's extremely bright and you can customize it however you want via the app. I do have an HP Reverb G2 hooked up here as well. So when I want to jump into VR, it's right there. No setup needed. And honestly, without spending crazy money, this is probably still the best racing slash flight sim headset on the market. The visual fidelity is much better than something like a Quest 2. It's way more comfortable with it being a PC VR headset and the audio is fantastic too. I don't don't always race in VR, but when I do, it's that. Now, of course, we have some more of this custom shelving running over the racing sim, and on here, I've got some of my 124 scale car collection. And if you're wondering where I got these from, they're all from Jada Toys. They're pretty inexpensive, but they do a lot of like street racing, fast and furious style cars. So if you're into that kind of thing, definitely check them out. I've also got them sat on top of some of these acrylic stands as well, just to raise them up a little bit so we can see them better. And then finally over on this wall, we have Govi's brand new hexagon ultra panels. These things look absolutely crazy in person. They have these really cool lines running around the edges in addition to these three segments. And it all comes together to create this awesome 3D effect that's unlike anything I've seen in any other light panels on the market. I believe they officially release on the 25th of September. Finishing up on this side of the room, this was kind of a weird space. We weren't really sure what to do with it initially. It's not really big enough for something like a desk and we didn't want it to feel cramped. We started with some more of these wood slat panels to help tie in with the rest of the room and slightly improve acoustics. There was a power outlet on the wall that we had to measure and cut around, but once it was finished, it all looked pretty seamless. Nene also likes collecting custom keyboards and keycaps 
recap. So we picked up this bookcase from Ikea. It's got a couple of drawers for storage. It's got plenty of shelving to display her collection. There's a lot of stuff on here from companies like Mel Geek, Nufi, Alferia Keys. And there's also a bunch of artisan keycaps as well that she's collected over the years. There's a few other decorations on these shelves like Nay's seal of approval plaque from Ed, the 100k YouTube play button, and another mini hypercube like the one we have on the workbench area. These things are really cool. They come in a few different sizes. If you're interested in picking one up, you can use code TECHTESSERACT at checkout for a discount along with free shipping. Now Nene also had the idea to add some pegboards to this unit. And to do this, we actually ended up using some retention clips from one of Govi's LED kits just to keep them in place. As you can see, we've also got the same custom LED lighting inside these aluminum channels. And overall, I feel like this just turned out really nice. It really helps to finish off the room and add some personal flair. That about wraps up for this tour. Now, if you want to check out any of the stuff we talked about in today's video, we'll have it all linked down below in the description for you. Now, the next project is the gaming setup. So we're going to be doing a bunch of uh, vlogs for you guys. We've also got a final tour coming when it's all done as well. So definitely get yourself subscribed if you haven't already. Drop a like on this video if you enjoyed it. It helps channel out. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you all in the next one.